So I forgot to play for like two days. Mostly because I passed out right before I was going to record. Wait, well, you'll. But. I feel like I remembered everything. I went through the well. There's the spirit calling bell, which I didn't get because I don't need it right now because. We're not gonna be using any ashes until we get to Battle Mage. Ah, then you met Blythe, did you? Wonderful. I'm glad I pointed you in his direction. He's boorish, blunt, and couldn't find his nose with both hands. But he's a good egg. <sighs> I think the two of you are sure to find the best in one another. Goodbye. Yes. I'm sure we will. I am sure we will. But the main thing about magic runs, again, is you spread your stats so much that in the early game, you don't really have enough for anything. And so the main main thing you need is just to go out and get a bunch of runes. And so that's half of the purpose of what we're doing now. It's half to get ourselves a bunch of runes and half to make a little grade of progress. Which, normally, I'd probably just skip in a challenge run, but we really need the runes. Hello. Buck, my guy, I'm sorry. But you're not relevant. I'm sorry. And right before recording, I figured out that I had 95 FP and I needed 96 to do 8 casts of Great Glenstone Shard, which is why I leveled up Mind, even though that's really not a good idea early on typically I mean if you're doing a pure magic build it is like then you want to get up to like vigor mind and intelligence but that is not what we're going for that's part of what makes battle major challenge run is you're also investing in the strength. And probably a bit of endurance as well. Which is a lot to invest in. Hi. Eastvon, what are you doing? You got the second one. Good gracious, my guy. What a terrible idea. That's not something you could have done. Hello. I mean, thankfully, we went and got Great Glenstone Shard immediately. Which does a lot of damage early on. There's like four variants. Yeah, Glintstone Pebble, Great Glintstone Shard. I forget the name of the stronger two, but there are two stronger ones above that. I know the third one takes 19. And the fourth one takes like 24 something. Something like that. 
but like none of them take too too much FP. But e each one takes more than the last by a little bit. By like six or so. But they're all really good. And they're all really worth getting for any magic run. Dragon Communion. This is the worthless one. There's two of these. There's another one in Kaelid. Which I believe also has Dragon Fire, Dragon Claw, and Dragon Maw. But then it also has a bunch of other ones. Which the other ones are the better ones. I have Rotten Breath, which used to be really, really good until it got nerfed. <gasps> Oh, oh, hello. Wait, you got it. Bok is a great NPC, but he's not very useful. Which is sad, but he's still worth it. Just because he's a nice little guy. <laughs> what My mum, and that's so I always. <gasps> In the beginning of Elden Ring, Health is just the most important thing. I tend to just go up to 20 vigor. J just get health to 20. And then you can start looking at other things. Because that allows you to survive a few shots. But. I think I'm just going to keep doing more, like, caves and stuff. Because that's... They're pretty easy. And early on, they are the best way to get runes. Which, I mean... If it works, it works. Dragon. I'm not here to fight. In my original run, I wasn't going to fight them. But I think it was the fourth one, like the fourth video. And I was just going and doing the different caves, and I went, well, I wanted something dramatic to end on. Because this is kind of an underwhelming one. And then I remember the dragon was there, and I was like, eh, yeah, sure. He's there. Why not? I didn't want to be a madman. And drop myself to one healy. Is this? Oh, it does one shot. Nice. That is very, very good. And will go a long way in helping us progress through the game. Line tunnel. Whatever. There are four different types of cave in this game. Of which... Tunnels are the best. Oh no, look at that. I took damage. Whatever am I to do? Let's do Talisman. That's why it's good. You take a little chip damage. Well, you keep taking a little trip damage, it's gonna add up. But now with Bless Do Talisman, with Bless Do Talisman, it'll. it'll patch you right up. I mean, you just take a little stroll, you just do a little walking, and look at that, we're basically full health again. Hi. Hi. 
And this is why, like, you can already start to see why magic is very powerful and why it has to kind of nerf itself early on. Because it does a lot of damage and it's long range. And most of it comes out pretty quickly. It's like, the guys here... They're like made out of rock. The rock people. And so if you use a slashing weapon, like a sword, it's just gonna bounce right off them and do very little damage. But... strike weapons, like hammers, they don't bounce off and they tend to do a bit more damage, but getting a one shot, oh item, getting a one shot is kinda hard, especially with a completely unupgraded weapon. But you can do that with magic. Which is nice. Honestly, for magic, it's less about how upgraded the weapon is. That guy. He didn't even get to attack. Oh man, I'm sorry, bud. That was brutal. You really didn't even get to do anything. Damn. I think I'm gonna put off patches for now, just because I don't want to do patches. Yeah, we can do Castle Morn. I mean, it's mostly because the invasion right before him is probably going to be pretty hard. Because I don't really know if the other games do it because. I don't use magic runs on the other games, because magic runs are kind of weak on the other games, or at least weaker, but something you notice when fighting some of the harder enemies here is every time you use magic, the enemies will just dodge it. Every time. It's just an input reader. Which means that you need to find a magic that's either delayed or magic specifically designed for them to not dodge. Which there is some magic like that. Mostly... I know there's one or two in Celia over in Kaelid. The Kaelid Wilds to the west or to the east. I know directions probably. Yeah, too good. But getting the health up is especially important here because we're not wearing a very defensive set of armor. Because we hopefully won't be putting too much into endurance. Hopefully. Because... Oh, that's not a one-shot. Oh. 
Look how much damage that dog did. That dog did a lot of damage. And uh, there's more where that came from. So, getting health up is very important. And also range is very important. And also more blue flasks are very important. And also more FP is very important. And there are a lot of things that are very important. And that's why you have to spread your stats a little too much in the beginning. But it's a worthy sacrifice. Because later on, later on, it'll be so good. Ooh. Just enough, thank you. Hi. And that's why speed is also important. Because when something gets on top of you on a ranged build, if you don't have the speed to take care of it, you're not gonna get it away from you. So it's important to have damage with your range, but also speed. Which I didn't do it in my last run, but I tend to have two weapon classes per run. I tend to have one that's meant for speed and one that's meant for damage. Because when I mean, when you do any run, both are important. But specifically when you do melee runs, it's kind of hard to get both out of a single weapon. That's why I used Greatsword. It, it's like a mix between everything. You don't... Greatswords aren't the best at any one thing. But they're pretty good at everything. It's the very versatile. And that's why I used them. That's why they're my go-to weapon class. Because they can be used for almost anything. Oh, you done throwing your temper tantrum? I have not upgraded this. That's probably something I should have done. Bonk. I'm not sure what I'll use the smithing stones for just yet. I think we'll do the hammer just for anything that gets close range, and then the staff. If I haven't gotten the Academy one yet, by then. Then Stone Club. I think it's called the Stone Club. Like the one that they specifically use. Alright, goodbye, 
don't notice me. Thank you for your cooperation, Edgar. I ignored your daughter, that's right. Uh, there's I'm Edgar, but you can see me. Yep. They gave me foul yep. I'm sorry, but whatever. Take this. That's not helpful. I'm gonna get a better version of that later. Now then, away with you. No reason to risk your neck, Dordlin, here, eh? Now then, you no reason. I mean, I do. It's called a runes. Oh. That did not go as expected, but it went better than I expected, so you take what you can take. You're not supposed to get here that way. You're supposed to go up top and then drop down, but running works. And it saves me from climbing up the ladder again, so... Not entirely sure what the intention there was. Because... That happens a lot in this game, honestly. Where I'm just not entirely sure what the developers wanted. For any one soul, get rid of that. Like, get rid of the break point. Okay. No. Big guy. Those guys are very much a threat early on to melee builds, but magic. You can use range. It's beautiful. Something I've noticed is typically with magic builds, specifically in this game, is any area that I enjoy fighting or enemy any enemy that I enjoy fighting with a melee build they aren't nearly as enjoyable when I'm using magic and it's the opposite with enemies and areas I don't like so if I don't like fighting them or I don't like if I don't like fighting or if I just like it for the exploration then I really enjoy it on magic runs oh that's not a one shot well wrong flask That is something that is going to happen a lot. Whip. Whips are actually really good in this game. In the other games, they're kind of a joke weapon that isn't used for anything. But in Elden Ring, because you can dual wield them, they actually become really powerful. I I do not want to play the boss alone. Cause that boss is very good at closing the gap. And Closing the gap is 
Now something magical for I could. Might I bend my Hello. name to servants I but I swear my good father oh. decided to I the servant they've since come, I fear it's please I know. would you mind my soul with please? Of course. Thank them please. Okay. Deliver. So Arena. She was originally from Dark Souls 3. Where she was blind and trying to become a firekeeper. In this game, her eyes are simply very weak. And she's not trying to become anything, I guess. I think she's just worried about her dad. Which, I mean, that's alright. But... I think it's kind of weird because she was Arena of Kareem in the last game, but she's Arena of Morn in this game. Which Morn was an area or a location of interest. In the last game, it's just not where she was from. I... Th I think she was with a Knight of Morn. And... That was part of the lore. Was that each Knight of Morn... Like, protected a maiden. Which you mostly have through item descriptions. Through, like, a ring and... Maybe a braille. Why are the people hanging? Why are you hanging, people? Oh, item. Like I said, it's gonna be a lot of skipping stuff this run. Magic feels so good. It's like I'm not really going for a completionist run here. I'm more going for. At least right now, just getting set up so that way I can survive. And hopefully, as soon as possible, set myself up as a battle mage. Which, you don't get the other two spells until like halfway through Lyernia. Now, you know, Reed. I see. Thank you. But I can't. Even if they're coming. To ensure. If her father. So now he'll help. Alright, so there was a reason to not ignore her. The faster you play these games, and like, the faster you try to push something, the more you learn. Because you really learn the limits of how fast you can get something, or how early you can get somewhere, without like, ruining a quest. Which is how I learned that going to Altus Plateau without killing Radon messed up Ronnie's quest. Because I really wanted to get to Altus Plateau. 
without killing a single boss. Which I successfully did. Ow. Edgar, 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 please, Edgar. My guy. Thank you. Edgar. 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 <laughs> These builds are not very survivable. <laughs> Which does not work very well with my very, very aggressive playstyle. But I think that's what adds to the fun. Is there's a little bit of panic when say Edgar doesn't attack. Or when I don't invest into stamina and then I run out of stamina. Just small things like that. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I mean, this is probably the most primitive enemy that does it. Normally it's like full on humans. other hunters like you. Hi. Oh, thank you for stopping him, because I missed that roll. It's okay, I'll get their attention. I should not have gotten their attention. Duh. Edgar. Edgar. My guy. Please. Thank you. A little bit of panic, but that's what makes it fun. Whoa. I wonder what this giant gravestone is for. One of the many questions that simply don't get answered. Because who would ever ask such a strange question? And the answer is someone who's played this game a few too many times. And starts looking at small, strange details. And thinking, hey, maybe there's something more here. the best shield of all time. I don't think I've ever used it, actually. But it, it's just cool. It's like a turtle shell that someone just picked up and they were like, this is a shield now. Which, I mean, are you gonna argue with that? Probably not. Thank you. Oh, hi. 70. Now these. Seek three wild beasts. Or wise beasts. Bonk. Yeah, there's one here that's invisible. I am not entirely sure where the third one is. Because I don't do these. I'm doing it now because uh Seal on the rise opened. I'm doing it now because 
one, this is the easiest one, and two, they give memory slots for your magic, so you can have more magic equipped at once. Yeah, memory stone. And yeah, they increase memory slots for your magic. Which, again, important for being able to use a lot of magic. Part of me feels like I should probably do Kennethite, but man, I do not want to do Kennethite. I'm not going to do Kenneth Height, but before I go and do anything else, I'm just going to upgrade this here. For the big bunk. Yeah, so instead of upgrading damage, per se, Upgrading stabs upgrades their sorcery scaling, which lets sorceries do more damage. Which is nice, but early on it doesn't give much. Only like one or two. And don't really need it yet. Yeah, they only gave five runes. Which I mean is fair. They don't fight back. But. Ow. Because. Because the Elden Ring is an open world game. Crafting. And just wild animals that graze. The developers make them drop like no runes. So you can't just farm off of them endlessly. Hello, Bernal. Not seen. Name's Bernal. Let me ask. Are you here? Does your face. Despite. Yes, it yeah, does. takes me any inch. All I now's the tip. No skill is important for right now. Well, it's not important right now, but it's important for this run. But better to save money right now. Because we can come back and get it later. Like, it's not super important right this second. It's mostly just for taking the skill off of the staff. So that way, when you use your skill button, it goes to the hammer instead. No. I think Henorchist might be one of the guys who dodges. Yeah. I mean, they do with melee buttons too. Ow. That was rude. That was rude. But yeah, they do with melee buttons too. But especially with magic. They are big fans of dodging. Can't dodge that, you're in the middle of an animation.
I have no idea how I figured this out. But I think you can get one one weapon from every weapon class in Limgrave. And the lance, which is the great spear, is one of the like last two or three that I figured out. Which, the other last one that I figured out was Colossal Weapon. Partially because Colossal Weapons are the only one that you don't pick up like that. You have to get it from an enemy, which is in an offshoot, slightly hidden part of Stormville Castle. Which sucks. Oh, you're getting up. Come here. I didn't feel like actually drawing. Knights are one of the few weaknesses that you're going to run into even at the end of the game as a magic run because they can just shield all of your magic. And it's still going to do some damage. But... Typically... With basically anything else... If you hit them enough... It breaks their guard. But magic doesn't do that for some reason. At least I've never seen it happen. Which kind of sucks. But it's also powerful and arranged. So you probably don't want it to be stance breaking as well because you don't want it to be too powerful. Like everything's gotta have a weakness. Except for great swords. Great swords will forever remain very powerful. Or... Don't you run to the side? That's illegal! Were you stuck on that? You gonna drop it? They did not drop it. They can drop the falchion, which is a nice little curved sword. Lance Talisman, which boosts damage on horseback. Look at this thing. You gotta get up. Oh, never mind. That is no damage. Goodbye. Norling Magic does a lot of damage to the rock guys. 
apparently he has grown a resistance. He's too powerful. He's too powerful to remain alive, but also he's too powerful for me to play right now, so... I mean, I probably Hello? could, but... Can you hear me? No. Help me. Hello. Oh, I at least. Hello. I just give... and I'll pop. Don't dally. Give it your all. Give it my all. Oh. Oh Great NPC. Ah, no, that. <laughs> well, I. Once again, I am beyond and upon this. I'd heard doesn't <laughs> think. To red me, I've heard there's. Every game has a character like him. Or it's like they're a knight or a warrior. And they're just jolly to be around. They're just happy to hang out. But they always get themselves in a bit of a pickle and they're like, hey, could you help? Which, they're happy to help, because they're great. They're a delight. And everybody loves them. Because who wouldn't? It's like, you had Siegmeier in Dark Souls 1. Oh, that's a one-shot. Beautiful. Play at Seaverd in Dark Souls 3. You didn't have one in Bloodborne because Bloodborne like didn't have NPCs. I mean it only had two side quests. Which was there's no mistake. Insane. Is there? Death has left its mark once again. Oh. Well known as Heed Mark. The village here. And worse yet, if you yeah. He has a very cool sword. The village turned back. I like what they what I like the idea with the armor. I'm not a big fan of the execution, but not every armor set is gonna please every single person, so it's fine. The sword makes up for it. Alright, let's go. 48 and a half minutes. Oof. Giant death root. Excuse me. Normally it's good to take those guys out and then take on the Marinot in a 1v1. That way you aren't endlessly running around trying to avoid several enemies. Fine, I'll do it. No. But yeah, that's the problem with that strategy. Sometimes they can just go. Okay, nerd. And then spawn a new group. I'll let them respawn because. They won't have time. So these things are 
giant death root, or at least they look like it. Skeletal. Another for where the pro. Mm. How would you? If you're inclined, then I'll introduce you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to, and the beast himself wishes for someone to take my place. What say you? Very well. I've marked the location for you, of a hidden gateway. It will lead you. Yep. So there are nine death root. There are like two or three from Tibia Mariners. Maybe four. Maybe four. And then the rest are in like catacombs or hero graves. But once, once you have four of them to this clown in here, I know people call him Grank, but I just call him Malekith because he turns into Malekith. But after you give him four here, he tries to fight you. He has a very cool design here. I actually like this design more than his Malekith one. Oh, you can see his face though. Mm, I smell it. Death. Feeding me. Mm -hmm. Tarnished. Bring more death. I shall feed me. A seal for incantations that. Uh, it skills with strength, which is neat. I like that a lot as someone who does strength builds. And then Beast Eye, which just tells you if you're in the general area of another death root. I shall feed. But once you start giving him more, everyone you give him. Uh, he gives you. a uh, whatchamacallit. He gives you an incantation, but after four, then he tries to attack you, and you have to beat him up a little bit, and then he's like, oh, sorry. The, the candy you've been giving me really went to my head there. Oop, golden seed. You guys have a lot of help, don't you? Yeah. I mean, they also give a thousand runes. Well, 1,094. Which is a lot of runes. But they can also one-shot you. This early on. Well, there's some giant skeletons in here, which... That fits with Kaled. just hit 54 minutes really don't want to go to an hour so I'm gonna jump down here get the dagger that Grank uses along with the dragon for shield talisman because that will go a long way in keeping me from not dying. Well, I think I want to cut it off before then, because I really don't want this to go to an hour. But, yeah.